Hello and welcome back to this series on Streamlit and Python. In the last video we made an app that looked something like this. It was an NLP app that used the spacey large model, a 780 megabyte model, to analyze the default text that we have, and you could change this if you wanted to, and automatically extract, based on these parameters over here in a form, different entities from that text. And you could select person, and it would extract person. However, I explicitly stated that in the last video, this is very problematic code in Streamlit, and it's problematic for one reason. This is a 780 megabyte file that is having to be loaded every time we execute the script. Now we managed to optimize our script a little bit because if you remember in the last video, we created this form which allowed for us to not rerun the script every time we changed one little thing, but instead only when we ran click me. However, it creates a huge problem. Even though we're just having to run click me, it's still having to reload the same model every single time the script runs. This is very computationally inefficient because we're having to load a lot of information. And if you notice, even with this one sentence, it's having to load up the model. And that's why we're seeing a slow running time here. So how can we improve this? Well, we can leverage something in Streamlit that's known as caching. We can cache the model and store it. Now models, or really kind of anything that needs to be cached, needs to be cached in the form of a function. So let's walk through these steps. First, we need to create a function, and we're going to call this load model. This is going to take one argument, and that's going to be the model name. That's it. And our function is going to look just like this. It's going to be NLP is going to be equal to spacey.load model name, and then it's going to return NLP. Basically, just what we see here. So let's go ahead and just work this now into our actual function. We're going to say NLP is going to be equal to load model, and we're just going to pass in that same argument. That looks pretty nice and easy to understand, right? Great. However, we notice that we don't have anything different here. When we change some of these parameters, it still is taking a long time to run because it's still loading in this model. We haven't cached anything yet. To cache it, we're going to use a decorator, so uh, the et symbol, st.cache. Now, you're probably going to have errors if you use cache, uh, as I do. Uh, in fact, you're going to see possibly one up here right now. And we're lucky it, nope, it has, fantastic. We get to have a learning experience. So one of the things that you'll notice about models, depending on the kind of model that you're returning, is you're gonna have a lot of hashing problems. And there's a bunch of different ways to solve this. I'm going to provide a link in the description down below to the Streamlit documentation. Here we are. I'm going to pull it up over here. I encourage you to spend some time with it. Now, for this particular problem, we are going to use this parameter right here, allow output mutation. I'm not going to get into what this is all about right now. If you want to and you're curious, feel free to go ahead and read all of this, but I think it's a little tangential for our purposes. So we're going to allow output mutation, and we're going to set that equal to true. Now let's return to our app. And if you notice, we're seeing run load model. That's telling me that this function is running. And now you'll notice we've got the output there. Now pay attention quickly to, or pay attention to how quickly the, the app runs now after we hit click me. It's simply running and loading. And now you might not notice a huge difference, but there is a difference here. The model is not having to load. The little delay time that you're seeing is the fact that it's the large model actually analyzing the whole text, it's parsing everything, it's finding the entities, but that difference in time that we're seeing, that's a difference of the model not having to reload each individual time, instead it's being simply cached because this has not changed at all. Were I to change this to the spacey medium model, I don't know if I have it installed in my base environment, turns out I don't, it would be having to reload. Let's go ahead and run the small model now. And it's reloading because the, the main parameter has actually changed. If I were to change this to the large model and rerun this, we would see the same thing happening. Uh, it would have to rerun the load. So this is one of the things that you can do with, uh, with Streamlit, is you can cache data. Now this is gonna be very useful if you're working with machine learning models, especially those that tend to be quite large, like Transformer or BERT models, or the spacey large model, or a large image, cl image classifier like uh, Detectron. 
These are also going to be very useful if you're working with very large data sets. You can load in a large data set and cache it so you don't have to reload it each individual time. You're going to find that if you're working with a large quantity of texts, somewhere in the range of 10 million words, you don't want to have to reload all that textual data. This is going to be the key to solving your problem and making life a lot happier for you while you try to develop an app. Become familiar with caching data. While it might not appear to be that essential when you're running things on your local environment and on local host, I promise you when you start trying to deploy these models in the field and get people to beta test, you will be very, very happy that you've learned about how to cache data and models correctly. That's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start doing what I think is going to be the, the more fun part of the series. We're going to start tackling very concrete digital humanities problems. We're going to solve things like how to create uh, something more robust than this, but a natural language processing app. We're going to make data visualization apps. We're going to explore all the different things that you can uh, uh, visualize, such as plots. We're going to have a network visualization app to analyze textual networks with a data set I've cultivated. And we're even going to have some fun and try to reinvent Voyant, a very popular DH tool, all in Streamlit. It's not going to be as good as Voyant, I promise, uh, but it'll be a, uh, a, a close facsimile, I hope. That's going to be it for this video, though. If you've liked this video series and you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon. And as always, thank you to all my Patreon supporters.